What's up creative faces, L up on set from Creative Sound. In this video, I like to address a few questions. Actually, it's the same questions over and over in my videos. Now, I touched on this before, but let's dive in. Some of you guys wanna know, how I get machine to work in conjunction with Studio One. Basically, it's just real simple. All you gotta do is come over here and drag and drop machine over, cause machine is a plugin, right? It, it's just as simple as that, just drag and drop and machine works flawlessly with Studio One. The way this works, and this is assuming that you guys have machine fully installed and registered on your system through native access, and you got all that going and you was able to run machine by itself that's the thing that means you can make beats and export audio and and do your thing do live shows with it and all that that good jab you don't even have to have studio one or whatever doll you might be using you have to make sure that you run in machine by itself first that's so it can register and go through the scanning process and all that good you know whatever once you do that and make the necessary installations wherever it needs to be so that when you launch studio one ableton live logic pro pro tools whatever you're using it will pull up properly right now the caveat about using machine and studio one together is that you know you have the workflow of the machine meaning you have the libraries that's that that's associated with the native instrument thing you know sounds.com and you know the kits that you bought is wow you know what i mean you have a, a nice library in conjunction with the workflow inside of studio one the downfall is that you lose functionality in regards to your navigation strip bar here on your machine if you have the machine you lose the play the stop the rewind the record actually the record works inside of here and that's probably the only thing in the transport section that will work in here in the in, in uh, machine and that's about it so that means that you know depending on the tempo of your session inside of studio one or like i say any other doll you're using machine will follow the tempo it, everything is locked in you don't have any control over the tempo you can't do any of this you know changing the time signature and you know you you, you have this option the resolution but you, you, you're not you're not changing the bpm or anything like that right now if you don't see it in your setup um basically it's over here in, in your browser section and if if you are new to studio one then yours will probably look something like this it looks very basic simple you read in words it takes forever like five fifty years to find whatever so there's this thing called thumbnails right and this is what i was doing so inside of uh, machine here or any plugin, third party plugin that is, in order to get thumbnails to show up in your browser section, you just go here and then just click update plugin thumbnail and it should pop up just like this. Now, I don't have everything updated. I have too many plugins to, to do that, but the ones that I like, you know, but what I was able to do was uh have everything in my favorite section uh, and and in this, the new studio one update you we can do this now so everything is much cleaner it's bigger it looks sleeker i like it and so now i can see like it, it looks pretty cool in the end as you can see there's still some things i did not update the thumbnail whatever okay that's that's vs2 and this is au now there is this section here in, in here called the plugin manager now in this section is where you do all your managing your plugins like if if something was blacklisted or something like that you can't see it this is where you handle all of that all right the best way to do this is is uh clicking on native instruments and everything will pop up but you just want to go down and see if you can see machine um if machine is blacklisted it will fall down here in this window right here um but we can find machine in here and um like i said before keep in mind like if you don't have everything registered properly and you don't have the latest version of the machine you could run into some issues right it could be the reason why you're not seeing everything again you want to make sure that you run the standalone version of machine first i'm gonna exit out of minimize uh, studio one so this is the standalone application, right? When you first install machine on your system, you definitely wanna make sure you run the standalone application first because it's gonna go through a scan process 
and it's going to make the necessary installations and drop things in areas that are supposed to be that way when you launch studio one pro twos logic cubase reason whatever program you're using it's going to pull up the next time you launch those programs something else i've done in the past this was like years ago i actually visit the preference area and if you go to the midi section i've always made sure that my virtual output was checked that was something I, 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 I've done. I've always done that. My inputs, I always made sure it was checked, but for some reason I unchecked it. And I guess it, that does not matter because machine still pops up in Studio One. So I guess you don't need to have this check. But I've always had this check here, virtual output. I'm not sure if that works or not, but I just, that's just something I've always done. Maybe Native Instruments has done something where you don't have to do that any longer, but I'll say try that. That may or may not work for your system. And if that doesn't work, then, you know, um, like I say, you want to make sure that you have everything registered properly because the last result in this case will be you will have to reinstall everything and yeah, we know that that's a very long process. Nobody wants to reinstall native instruments products because this stuff man the library in here is super huge nobody wants to go through that process but it's worth it i had to do it at one point because my libraries got janked up i had to switch hard drives and um i had to go through that process so i know how like hectic that is but i promise you that it man it'll pay off it pays off in the long run another thing you want to keep in mind is i have studio one professional so if you have the prime or the artist version you may not see that in your in your instrument section this is what i'm hearing from some of the people there are limitations of course to the cheaper versions of studio one so that might be a factor that you're dealing with as well not being able to see everything pop up like it needs to because you don't have the full version of studio one hopefully this information was helpful to you guys if you have any comments or concerns please feel free to visit the comment section and just just type out your thoughts there and i'll get back with you as soon as i can again this is ella remember music is art you the artist paint your picture stay creative without rules. rules